Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Today's story is titled, Routine Flight. It's the tale of another remarkable accomplishment by the men who fly our intercontinental bombers, the B-52s. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage, and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may realize. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior serviceman's folder. It will give you full details on the advantage of returning to the service as an airman. You'll see why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now here is the first act of our proudly we hail production of Routine Flight. What's for supper? I need a kiss, Fur. Uh, mm, that's for free. Now, what's for supper? Now, don't rush me. It isn't every girl who has a handsome Air Force Sergeant romancer in her kitchen. Let me take time to enjoy it. Hey, you keep your fingers out of there. You'll burn your... Oh, oh you see, I told you. Did you scald yourself? Oh, no blood. Well, whatever's cooking in there sure makes the pain much easier to bear. The only thing that'll completely cure me is food. You can wait. The minute Timmy comes in, we'll eat. I thought it was awfully quiet around here. Where is the monster? Your son is down at the corner playing ball. Well, if I know him, he should be catching the smell of supper right about now. Just like his father. Oh, you're a mind reader. Here he comes. Start okay. counting. One, two, three. What's for supper? Yes, see? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Just like his father. All right, Timmy. Did you bring me anything from the base, Pop? You know, when I was your age, I was taught to say hello first when I came into the house. Hello, Pop. Well, Come on, both of you. Wash up if you want to eat. I washed all right out. See? I'm clean. Well, let me see. Okay, good enough. Now, how about you, Sergeant? Don't include me in the same category as him. Father, you know. Even though we're related, the same rules don't necessarily apply. Oh, shucks. Discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did the game go, hmm? Not so good, Pop. Take some food, Timmy. Ah, uh, you had your foot in the bucket again, I'll bet. I've told you time and again, you'll never hit anything if... Don't you want anything to eat, Timmy? Mom, is it all right if I go up to my room? Anything happen today, Tim? No, Pop. Honest, nothing. I just don't feel so hot. My neck hurts. Timmy, come here and let me feel your forehead. I'm all right, Mom. I just don't feel like eating. Now, you just said you didn't feel so hot. Let your mother feel your forehead. Come on, let's see. Fred, he's burning up. Mom, I'm all right. Come on, young man. We'd best be getting you to bed. Fred, call the doctor. Fred, get the clock, please. Okay. Oh, for goodness sake, take it easy. Boy, that thing's loud enough to wake the dead. I've got to stop off the PX one of these days and get a new one. What are you talking about? Let them. What time is it? Oh, six, I'm late. I have to get out of the base. Want me to get up? No, I'll stay in bed. I'll have breakfast at the base. Did you get up again? Mm-hmm. 
Gave him an alcohol rub and some more aspirin. He finally fell asleep. And did he get the rest of his medication? The doctor said we should finish the bottle. That, too. Fever still hasn't broken, though. What do you think it is? I wish I knew. I'm supposed to call the doctor this morning if the fever's still up. Now, look, do me a favor. Call the base if anything serious develops. Let me know, Dad? huh? Dad? Timmy! Oh, sweetheart, you should be in bed. Dad, you're going to work? Yeah, yeah, I have to, Tim. Dad, would you do a favor for me? Sure, Tim, anything. Bring me something, will you? Guard, is the room secure? Yes, sir. The room is secure. All right. Snap off the lights. Gentlemen, I'll give it to you straight. We've been on lots of missions. Some of them short, most of them long. Routine flights. But tomorrow at 1300 in exactly 29 hours, we're going the long way round the world. Would you give me the first slide, please, Sergeant? There it is, laid out for you. A little jaunt of almost 25,000 miles. Our route is simple. We'll leave Castle at 1,300 hours, cut across the United States to Newfoundland, hop the Atlantic to French Morocco, proceed to Dharan over Saudi Arabia. We'll skirt the coast of India and Ceylon, make a simulated bomb drop off the Malay Peninsula, then we'll continue to the Philippines, over Guam, then home to Castle. All in all, it should be quite a trip. We're declaring an alert as of this minute. I hate to take it by surprise this way, but it's the staff's wish that this mission be top secret until its completion. You can all contact your families, but just to indicate that you have been alerted for a routine flight. Get that, a routine flight. Now there's lots of work to be done, so let's get hopping. Assignments are posted on the duty board. Navigators can pick up their charts in the duty office. That'll be all. Wow, that was quick. Now, let's go take a look, Mick, see if we're included. Yeah, it'd be just my luck. The ladybird would be left behind. Oh, I doubt it. If the general rides, he rides in your plane. It's going to take a lot of doing to keep him home on this one. What are you mumbling to yourself for? Huh? Oh, I, I was just figuring. Right? You know, we could do this in under 50 hours if we get the right brakes, and refueling doesn't hold us up too much. I guess so. Hey, what's the matter, Freddy? You, you look kind of down. I didn't get too much sleep last night. Timmy's sick. Oh, anything serious? I don't know. Kids can run high temperatures at times, but he's getting a little old for that sort of thing. He's complaining about being headachy. He says his bones hurt him. Uh, could be almost anything. Uh, has he had his polio shots? I thought of that. He doesn't. It's our own fault, too. When we moved from Loring last year, I told Millie that we should all go in and get them over with. Well, Mill's talking to the doctor again this morning. Let me know what she says. Yeah, I will. I will. Come on. Here we are. Let's go in and check. Turn her down, will you? I'm on the phone. Sorry, honey, but it can't be helped. Those are the orders. Well, look, I'm not kidding anybody. I, I could use you here, but your job comes first. I'm glad I have you around as much as I do. Does Timmy want to talk to me? Uh, let him sleep now. The doctor says he needs sleep. Has he eaten anything? Nothing. Keep giving him sips of water. The doctor says the fever should break tonight, and he should start feeling better by tomorrow, all things being equal. What does that mean? Truthfully, I didn't want to ask him. Will you be able to call me tomorrow? I don't think so. Well, you won't know if he's better or worse. Look, if it's a real emergency, call communications. I'll get in touch with me, okay? Okay, okay, honey. Now, try not to worry, will you? You too. And Fred, he asked again. Don't forget to bring him something when you come home. Yeah, so long, darling. Hey, Fred, Fred. I just had the most sensational idea. I've just been telling Inky here. Yeah. I got it all figured out. Now look, as tail gunners, we sit in the back of the plane facing backwards, right? All we look at is jet stream. Now if the gunners in the other planes go up forward for a breather, all I have to do is stay right where I am and I'll be the first man in the world to fly around the world backwards. How You're about that? nuts. We... Yeah. These ground crewmen are all cynics. He thinks I'm kidding, but I'm serious. It's a great idea. I'm gonna put a slew of mystery novels and candy bars in my kit. Well, I'll go down in history for my accomplishment. Just think of it, Fred. The first man to go around the world backwards. I'm sorry, Fred. Is there anything new at home? No, nothing. I'd like to hit the hay soon. I don't think we'll have much sleep where we're going. I'd like to store some up. Yeah, you and me both. Let's cut. 
Think about that riding backwards. Hmm? You're not kidding, are you? Well, that's about it, Major Byer. All that's left to say is good luck. Thank you, General. I think we got a good thing going for us here. I wouldn't be surprised if we startle a few people with this one. But we can't demonstrate Strategic Air Command's striking power too often, as far as I'm concerned. Let the enemy know you're ready to retaliate and you never have to fear attack. Amen to that, sir. All right, Jim. I'm in the lead plane with Holbrook. Let me know if you have any problems. Yeah, I'll check when we're airborne, sir. Fine. Let's go. Sergeant, you can lock her up. Yes, sir. And, uh, Fred. Yes, Major. I haven't forgotten. I've notified communications about you, son. They'll be in touch with us. Thanks, sir. Take a break after we refuel. Come up forward. I'll let you know what I've heard. All secure, sir. Okay. I'll check in on your phones when you're set back there. Good luck, Fred. Same to you, sir, but we won't need it. We've got more than luck. We've got a good crew. Hello, Castle Tower. This is Air Force Jet 521674. Ready for takeoff. Air Force Jet 521674. This is Castle Tower. You are cleared for takeoff on runway 5. Stand by. We're number 3, aren't we, Jim? Yep. You ran it down again, didn't you, Si? Twice. Well, there goes the general's plane. Okay, then. AC to crew, ready for takeoff. Gunner acknowledged. Gunner Welco. a cup of soup. What is it you want? Mom, listen. There's some planes flying over. They're 52. I'll bet one of them is Pops. Look, will you, Mom? Well, I couldn't tell from here, Timmy. Please, Mom. All right. Yeah, those are 52s, all right. Five of them in formation. I wonder where they're going. One of them is Pops, I'll just bet. I'm going to be a flyer when I grow up. Just like Bob. I'm glad, Timmy. You know, one of those planes could be Daddy. He said something about a routine flight. I'm sure it is. I feel it in my bones. I take it your bones are feeling better? I think I feel better, Mom. Okay, let me feel your forehead. You're right. I think your temperature's broken. Mom? What, Timmy? If that really was Dad's plane, and he really is going someplace, he's sure to bring me back something special. Isn't he, Mom? You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Routine Flight. We'll return for our second act in just a moment. If you have service experience gained in any of the armed forces, opportunity is knocking on your front door right now. The Air Force needs skilled veterans in many technical categories and it offers you valuable incentives and guarantees. For example, if your skill can fit a current Air Force shortage, you'll receive a grade based on your ability and military background. If you don't have such a skill, you may qualify for the finest of technical training, putting you out in front in this jet age. This is only part of the story. Your local Air Force recruiter has a new personalized prior service booklet that will show you in detail how you can improve your present status and brighten your future as a member of the Air Force team. Call or visit him right away. Find out why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now for the second act of the proudly we hail production of Routine Flight. Well, there's nothing like it, is there, Si? What's that, Jim? Watching sun go down from the cockpit of a plane. I never get tired of looking. It's so peaceful. The first sunset. First? Well, we're traveling at about half the speed of the Earth. 
Yeah, it's a figure I remember from my days at navigational school. 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, right? Right. Well, the uh, time span between sunrises is compressed to 16-hour sun days rather than full 24-hour days. We're over the Great Lakes now, and we're seeing our first sunset. We'll be seeing either a sunrise or a sunset every eight hours around the world from here on. Sunrise over the Atlantic, sunset over Saudi Arabia, sunrise over Malaya, sunset over Guam, and finally sunrise over Castle Air Force Base, California. Total, three sunrises, three sunsets in a period just a few hours short of two full normal-sized days. I bet it wasn't this complicated when Magellan took three years to circle the globe. I think I prefer our trip. No scurvy. She's an autopilot. You want to take a break? No, I can't relax. We're moving too fast. When we do for our first refueling? Not for a while yet. Hello, routine flight. This is the flight leader. In approximately 20 minutes, on our signal, we will break flight formation and proceed singly. Each plane has separate fueling rendezvous points. We will reassemble for exercise and homeward leg. Jet 521674, acknowledge. This is Jet 521674, Wilco. This is the flight leader. Out. Follow the leader, huh? Playing it safe. I think I will take a break. Okay, send Williams up. Let him ride herd for a while. All right. Want anything, boss? Yeah, he might bring me back a cup of coffee. And, uh, yeah, if Sergeant James is back there, tell him there's been no news about his son yet. Tell him that's good news. <laughs> You're the chipper one this morning. How you feeling? You look much better. I feel swell. Can I go to school today? Well, take it easy. Give yourself at least one day without temperature. Now, you go back to your room, and I'll make you some breakfast. What would you like? Orange juice, oatmeal, pancakes, sausages, mm -hmm. some milk. And if you've got any more of that cake left, I'll take a piece of that, too. <laughs> I don't have to take your temperature to find out how you're feeling this morning. Now, you go up to your room, and I'll see if I can get up at least half of that mess you're asking for. Okay, Mom. I'll get it, Timmy. You get into bed. Hello? Oh, hello, Major. How are you? Fred told you about Timmy? No. <laughs> if you could have heard his breakfast order, you'd know there was no need to worry. Well, I told Fred I'd get in touch with him only if anything serious developed and hasn't. Tomorrow morning? Well, I should think Timmy will be able to leave the house by then. You sent a car for it? Well, thank you, but that won't be necessary. We could... Well, all right, then, if, if you insist. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll be ready about seven. Yes. Th thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, Si, let's take her up to 35,000 again. Boy, I'm certainly looking forward to the day the first jet tanker's delivered. <laughs> we'll really be able to take some time off the fueling operation. Well, that won't be too long. Getting quite a bit of turbulence. Yeah, rock and roll. Glad we finished fueling. I think we're going to get quite a bit. There's some thunderheads up ahead. Well, let's ride it out. Oh, I'm glad you called, Sergeant. I should have warned you. That's something called St. Elmo's Fire. It's nothing to worry about. I've seen it before. It's caused by static electricity. We should be shaking it soon. Our latest weather report calls for clearing. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since the flight began. I've heard nothing from your folks. I think that's a good sign, sir. I'm sure it is. How are you riding back there? Well, that's a little boring, sir, but I've, uh, I've taken a break or two. Now keep your eyes open. We should be reassembling for our exercise in the next couple of hours. That'll give you a little activity to chew on. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention it. Keep changing your clothing so we're ready for an emergency letdown in any climatic conditions. Yes, I, I have been, sir. Good. And don't worry, your family's going to be all right. I won't, sir. AC out. Hello, routine flight. This is the flight leader. Prepare to execute exercise A. We'll make our drop on a course of 090. We'll make two runs on the target, now bearing 085. 
When the runs are complete, Blake will reassemble on me for homeward leg. Jet 521675, acknowledge. This is Air Force Jet 521675, Wilco. Sergeant, have you the slightest idea what this is all about? I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't. Mom, I'm awfully tired. Oh, honey, I know you're tired. How are you feeling? Bye, Mom. We're tired. Well, why don't you curl up back there and take a nap? We, we still have quite a way to go to the base, don't we, Sergeant? Yes, ma'am, uh, about an hour. Do that, Tim. All right, Mom. Uh, we didn't anticipate this early flight down to Los Angeles. Our instructions were to go out to Castle, and now we're heading for March Air Force Base. You saw the weather up there this morning. The field was fogged in, so General LeMay gave the order for the flight, your husband's flight, to go into March. Well, I wish I knew why. Whatever it is, must be quite a shindig being planned out at the base. Why's that, Sergeant? Well, I have a buddy in the band, and he was busy polishing his brass this morning, shining his boots. Oh, really? I wish you could drive faster. I thought you were going to put your head down. You don't want me to break any laws, do you, Timmy? We might miss that surprise being planned for your dad. <laughs> Sign this. Hey, a short snorter. I haven't seen one of these since my World War II days in the Pacific. <laughs> Captain Wakers is passing it around, marking the memorable events, he says. Uh, you tell him the mind is navigating. The flight's not over yet. Uh, when you were out for a break, the word came in. We're going to march. Castle is fogged in. Oh, boy, I hate to tell the sergeant that. Well, I'll try and arrange some transportation for him. He can call the moment he gets in. You wouldn't know there was any fog from up here, would you, Si? Ah, that's the way I like to travel. High above the weather. Taking fog, rain, snow, or sleet. We play it cozy up here, above the clouds. It is great, isn't it? I still can't believe it. I was zooming along here at almost supersonic speeds. Guess I'm still used to the reciprocating engines I was weaned on. The phenomenon of flight seems magical enough without all the extras we get in the 52. Hey, hey, hey boss, look over there. Hmm? Hey, in the distance. Bearing about zero one zero through, through the break in the clouds? Hey, you're right. That's land. We've made it, Si. Hello, flight leader. This is Air Force Jet 521674. We have sighted land bearing about... Thank you, Major. We've seen it. Congratulations to all of you. Stand by to let down in about 15 minutes. And, oh, yes, better tell your men to be reasonably presentable. I understand we're in for a welcoming soiree. Here we are, ma'am. Just in time, too. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Come along. T oh, <laughs> isn't that just like a boy? He chatters all the way here, and then the minute we pull in, he falls asleep. Why don't you let him sleep for a while? I'd like to. There's going to be a good deal of excitement, and he's still feeling the effects of this illness. He could use the rest. Look, here come the planes. Well, Say, why don't you join the group of wives over there with Major Hebbard? I'll keep an eye on Timmy. When the ceremony's about to start, I'll wake him and bring him over. If you're sure that won't be too much trouble. No trouble, ma'am. Not a bit. Okay, then. Taxi to platform at end of runway 5-4. When your engines are cut, you will assemble for formation on the platform. I have also been directed to inform you that your official running time has been announced as 45 hours and 19 minutes. Congratulations. Launch tower out. All right, Sai. Stand by to drag the chute. I'm about to touch down. Okay, boss. Go ahead, let her drag. Chute open, Sergeant. Smooth this out, Major. Good boy. We'll be climbing down in a minute, Fred. Run and make your call. Thank you, sir. That drag chute is certainly an ingenious way of cutting speed. You know, I'm beginning to believe all the stuff I read about the Air Force, Jim. There's no question about it. We're an unusual outfit. Hey, don't fall apart yet. We're in for a visit from the big brass. Take a look out there. Holy mackerel. Uh, look at the photographers. Oh, stand by. I got a hunch this is going to be a lot tougher than circling the globe. The only man in the world to have ridden around the world backward. And it gives me the right and privilege to wear all my medals that way. <laughs> How are you, boy, huh? Hey, hey, Fred, it's me, Mickey. What are you looking for? Millie and Tim, they're supposed to be here. Oh, there's Millie. Mel! Millie, over here! Where's Timmy? Millie, where's Tim? What, what's happened to Tim? Fred! Fred, darling! Oh, you've been around the world. Oh, it's so wonderful. Millie, Millie, listen to me. Where, where, where's Timmy? Is he in the hospital? In the hospital? Oh. Oh, Fred, I'm so sorry. 
Oh, I, I should have told you. You had no way of knowing. Knowing what? Nothing. Darling, he's fine. He's, he's asleep in the back of the car over there. Oh, oh my God. Well, come on, Fred. The ceremony's starting. Uh, you, you, you better wake him, darling. I'm, I'm sure he'll want to know what I brought him. Oh, don't be silly. You make him sound like the most selfish kid in the world. It won't kill him that you weren't able to get him anything where you were. What? Uh, don't, don't jump to conclusions. Let him see for himself. We're getting the Distinguished Flying Cross. If you're a veteran, chances are you know about the Air Force reenlistment policy and the opportunities it offers to all former servicemen. But here's the important news you may not have heard. The Air Force has now liberalized its policy to bring you even further benefits. A wider range of skills is now accepted. There's a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. And think about this. If you qualify on the basis of an aptitude test, the Air Force may be able to guarantee technical training. Yes, guarantee you this even before you enlist. Contact your nearest Air Force recruiter right away, without obligation, of course. See why we say, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>